Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we are going to talk about the Holy Trinity of lenses. We're going to talk about the three lenses that I use to shoot weddings, events, portraits, really the only three lenses that I use for anything in my professional photography work. Before we get started, don't forget to be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere the podcast can be found. Be sure and join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And if you are so inclined, come to see me speak and teach because in 2020, I will be teaching at two of the biggest conventions that you can possibly go to. Fantastic conventions. You are guaranteed to have a good time. I go every single year. And those conventions are Imaging USA, which will be in Nashville in January, and WPPI, which will be in Las Vegas in February. February. I'll be teaching at both of them, so just visit their websites and uh, find out when I'm teaching, and if it's something you want to see, then uh, come see me and meet me personally, and uh, come hang out in the bar afterwards, <laughs> because that's where that's where the real learning, I think, begins sometimes at these uh, conventions. All right, the Holy Trinity, the three lenses. I travel and I speak and I teach all over the country, and uh, when it's time for questions, I'm always surprised that one of the most common questions I get is, what lenses do you use to shoot a wedding? And I guess it's because I've been using the same lenses for so long that I just assume that everybody uses these lenses. They're very popular and they have even got a name. People call them the Holy Trinity because it's three lenses and many, many wedding photographers use these three lenses. Now, I'm not going to say all wedding photographers use these three lenses. Some use more, some use less. Uh, some are prime shooters and use only prime lenses. We'll talk about that in a minute. But these are the three lenses that I use, and I'm going to show you the lenses, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so here's the lenses quickly. Number one is the 16 to 35 uh, millimeter L series f2.8 lens from Canon. Number two is the 24 to 70 L series f2.8 lens from Canon. And number three is the 70 to 200 L series f2.8 lens from Canon. Now, you are noticing that there's something familiar about all of these lenses, besides the fact that they're all Canon lenses because I'm a Canon shooter, but also they are all L series lenses and they are all f2.8 lenses. Now, here's what that means. First of all, L series. L series is, uh, well, we like to say that's the expensive series. If you're going to buy glass from Canon and you want to pay top dollar, then you're going to buy an L series lens. You can always tell the L series lenses because they always have this red band right here around the top of the lens. That's how you know you're going to pay a lot of money for your lens right there, <laughs> that red band. Uh, L series glass is their best glass. Uh, it's a proven glass. It's great glass. It's heavy glass. It has a lot of elements in it. Uh, it's going to last you a long time. It's workhorse glass. It's the best pro glass, you know, really that you can buy. I just love it. Some of the best pro glass uh, that you can buy anyway. Uh, the other thing is you notice that all of these lenses are f2.8 lenses. And the reason is because I use zooms. I only use zoom lenses. I'm not a prime shooter when it comes to weddings. And if you're going to use a zoom lens, f2.8 is as wide as you can go. You can't go any wider than f2.8 with a zoom lens. They just can't make it where it will do that. But many zoom lenses actually don't go as wide as f2.8. Many of them will be like, say, f3.5 at the widest point. And then as you zoom, they will get more narrow. So they sometimes you'll see a lens that will say uh, 3.5 to 5.6. And what it means is when it's at its widest point, it's 3.5. And then when you zoom in full zoom, it's like 5.6. That's, that's as wide as you can get. Well, an f2.8 lens is f2.8 at its widest point all the way through the focal range. So it doesn't matter how much you zoom, it's always going to be able to go all the way to f2.8. And being able to get more light in the camera is very, very valuable. And the other thing that's valuable for that is that the sweet spot for the focus on a lens tends to be uh, two to four stops maybe above whatever its widest point is. So if you have a lens that's widest point is f2.8, then the sweet spot for focus is going to be up around 5.6, 6, maybe, you know, 8.0, somewhere in there. That's the sweet spot for focus. If you're using a lens that's a 5.6 lens, then the sweet spot for focus is going to be much higher uh, or maybe up around f11 and there's not many people shooting around f11 really because we like that nice uh, bouquet we like that nice soft background so we tend to shoot more wide if we can so that's so that's why i use f2.8 lenses and that's why i use l lenses one of the other advantages of buying um, l lenses uh, these really expensive lenses from Canon is that if you're like me and you love to research and you love to look at gear and you're always worried that you're missing out and you're always worried that, you know, maybe I just need one more piece of gear that make my job easier or make my job more fun. 
If you just go ahead and break down and buy the very best of something, then you don't have to do that anymore. I have the same philosophy with watches. Like you know, right now, you know, I just I wear a smart watch. But before we had smart watches, I used to wear a very expensive watch. And the reason was because I love watches and I was always looking at watches and shopping for watches. And then one day I realized if I just bought a really good expensive watch, I wouldn't have to look at watches anymore because I'd always have a really expensive watch to wear. And, you know, what's the point in looking at a Timex when you already own an Omega? So that's what I did. And that's kind of an advantage to having the expensive lenses is if you buy really good glass like this, you no longer have to look at glass. Every time somebody comes out with a new lens, you don't have to pay attention to it because you already have these fantastic, fantastic lenses. All right, so let's talk about what these lenses can do. Um, the first thing is you've got a great focal range. You start at 16, that's the widest, 16 millimeter with this, and you go all the way through 200 with the big 200 millimeter lens and everything in between. So you have no dead spot anywhere in that lineup. So the question then becomes, when do you use each lens at which point during the wedding? And what's great is I took my last wedding and I ran it through uh, the uh, bridge, and uh, the Adobe Bridge. And in there, you can look and you, it will tell you exactly how many pictures you shot with each lens and how many pictures you shot at which focal length. And so you can really start to, to look at your numbers and see what you're using for what. And here's the numbers that I came up with. The, the lens that I use the most is this one, the 24 to 70. I, of the last group of images that I delivered to a wedding, 67% of those images were shot with this lens right here. Now, that's not to say that 67% of the images that I shot were done with this, all right? This is what I delivered, which is all that really matters. Okay, so of the images I delivered, 67% were shot with this lens. So this is absolutely my go-to lens. This is my walk-around lens. This is the number one lens that I use. 20%, I'm sorry, 28%, looking at my numbers over here, 28% were shot with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. And only 5% were shot with this lens. Which is funny because when I think about that wedding, it was, I think, uh, nine hours. It seems like I had this lens on my camera a lot, but I guess I didn't. Or at least I didn't save a lot of the pictures because only 5% of the images that I delivered were shot with this lens. But what was shot with what and, and how valuable is it? Why do you need this lens? Well, all right, let's start with the big one. Let's start with the uh, 2470. This is the lens that I shot most of my stuff with. What am I shooting with this lens? Well, when I walk into any room, this is my go-to lens. I put this lens on first. If I'm going to be shooting the getting ready pictures, if I'm going to be shooting uh, the groups and the family groupings, that's all done with this lens. When I'm working the reception, I'm going to be using this lens a lot. When I'm working the actual ceremony, I might be using this lens a lot. Now, this is very important because this particular ceremony was indoors and in kind of a tight quarters because it was supposed to be out, outside and they had moved it indoors. So I used this a lot during the ceremony. But when I work on the beach and I have lots of room to move, I shoot almost the entire ceremony with this. So if you were to look at a beach wedding that I had shot, you would discover that many more images were shot with this lens than the 2470. The beauty of having the two lenses is that I can bounce back and forth between the two, whichever one the situation demands. At this particular wedding, it was the 2470 that got used more than any other lens. This is the lens I use anytime I'm doing a headshot. If I'm gonna be taking a picture of just your face, this is the image that I'm, the, the lens that I am going to use. I use it all the time. When I'm shooting headshots, this is what I use. Professional headshots, this is what I use. If I'm shooting headshots at a wedding, this is what I use. And when I am working with the bride and groom, if I can, I'm going to use this lens because it is going to zoom in nice and it's going to blow up my background. It's going to make my sunset look better. It's going to blur the background better. It's going to remove distractions. So I really love this lens, despite the fact that only 5% of my images from my last wedding were shot with this lens. And then we get to the 16 to 35. This lens is used mostly at a wedding for really wide shots of like when you want to get a whole shot of the whole wedding venue right? You're going to use this lens when you want to get a wide shot of, of the chairs and the altar and the actual ceremony. You're going to use this lens. You might use this during the getting ready phase to get a wide shot of the room. You might use this when the bride's getting ready and getting into her dress and say you've got to squeeze in between the dress and a wall because you're in a tight hotel room. You might use this. You're going to get some distortion with this lens when you go really wide. And what I find is I shoot with this lens really wide a lot and then I crop. 
I crop it down. And a lot of times when I'm finished cropping, I end up looking at the image and going, you know, I, I, I could have shot that image with this. But by shooting with this, in, this lens, I am insured to get everything that I want Right? I'm not going to miss any of the action by shooting wide with this lens. And the other great advantage of this lens is when you're shooting the reception, and the reception is where I really work this lens out. I really work this lens out when I'm shooting the dance floor. When you're shooting the reception and you're shooting wide, this enables you to shoot with a more shallow depth of field. Well, not so much a shallow depth of field as a, uh, a lower aperture. So if I was shooting with, say, this lens, on the dance floor, I might not want to go below 5.6 or so because I'm going to start to lose some focus on some people dancing. But with this lens, I'll have no problem shooting at 3.5 because it's so wide that I get a greater depth of field. You understand that the wider the lens is, the greater your depth of field. So if you're shooting with this at 3.5, you're probably getting the same depth of field that you would get with this at, say, 5.6 if both of them are wide open. All right, so here's another very interesting statistic that I got from running the numbers on my last wedding. And that is, what focal length am I shooting at? And of course, because I use zoom lenses, the focal length is, there's a million different variables, right? The 28 millimeter, 29 millimeter, <laughs> right? But by far, there were two focal lengths that dominated the pictures that I delivered to my client. And those two focal lengths are the widest one on this, right? 16 millimeter, 14% of my total images were shot with this lens at 14, at, I'm sorry, at 16 millimeter. And the other one, 21% of my images were shot with this lens at 70. So mo the majority of my images, or at least a large part of my images, about one third, were shot with this lens wide open and this lens completely zoomed. The two, you know, far ends of the possible spectrum, 16 to 70. That was where I shot most of my images. Well, I keep saying most, 30% of my images were shot at 16 and 70. I find it really interesting. I, I never really looked that up until today. And I was like, hmm, and what does that say about how I'm shooting, right? Is there, is there some information I can get from that that might help me in the future to decide what gear to use? Speaking of deciding what gear to use, the next question I get a lot is, uh, do you only use zoom lenses? You know, do you use prime lenses? And I don't. Um, I don't use prime lenses at weddings. I would love to use prime lenses at weddings. Uh, I think prime lenses tend to have a sharper focus. Uh, prime lenses uh, have a wider aperture, so you can get a more shallow depth of field, get more light in the camera. And there are photographers who shoot weddings with only prime, limit, prime, limit, <laughs> with only prime lenses. And I envy them. Uh, I love the work that they do. But I just can't do it because I have been using zoom lenses for just too long to get away from them. And when I look at the focal lengths that I shoot at in the course of a wedding, I shoot at every possible focal length, all the way from 16 to 200, everything in between. And if you strapped me into where I was shooting a wedding where all I had was a 35 and you know an 85 and, and a 100 or something or something along those lines, and everything, had, oh, I think it was just it would. It would take me a while to get used to it. You know, like when I'm shooting uh, the first dance, I want to be able to put on my 7200 and zoom in close to get close-ups of the, of, the, of the couple's faces. And then I want to swap out to the 1635 and be able to shoot a wide shot to get the entire room. And then I want to put on the 2470 to get the full-length shots. Um, and while you could do some of that with primes, you couldn't get exactly what you want every time. You've got to zoom with your feet. Well, I, I don't like to step on the dance floor during the first dance. There was a time when I would have gotten out there on the dance floor with the couple. I don't do it anymore. I stay off the dance floor and I use my big 70 to 200 millimeter zoom so I can zoom in. That would give them the dance floor. That's what, that dance floor is for them, right? Um, when I'm taking pictures of the ring exchange, I like to use the 70 200. That way, I can stand back at the first row of chairs and still zoom in and get the hands without stepping up there to the altar during this very important part of the ceremony. Now, if you're shooting with primes, uh, you might have a long prime zoom that you could use for that. I think a lot of people who shoot with primes don't necessarily have long prime zooms. They, they tend to stay more in the, in the mid-range. And so maybe they don't get that shot. And maybe that's fine, right? I mean, there's no shot. That, there are a few must-have shots. You must have the first kiss. But, but other than that, everything else is kind of at your discretion. So, so, uh, so much love for the prime shooters. If you're a prime shooter, much love for you. And if, if you love it and your clients love it, that's great. But it just doesn't work for me. That being said, 
I would love to one day when I scale back, maybe uh, become a prime shooter and shoot weddings with just one or two lenses for a feel, for a look, right? To go down that path. That's the great thing about photography. You can do whatever you want to do. You can create your style and then it's up to you to sell it to your clients. But it gets to be your style. So my style has always been very much a I can do everything style. So whatever you throw at me, I can shoot it. And the reason is because I carry the holy trinity of lenses to a wedding. And I typically am literally carrying them. I'll have this one on my camera and I'll have the other two on my hip and I'm prepared to swap out fast in any situation to get the shot that I want at a wedding. All right, so there it is. The holy trinity of wedding lenses to answer all the people who are always asking me what lenses I use at a wedding and why, there they are. Once again, the 20, uh, the F, they are all L series, F 2.8 lenses. It's the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. If you like my channel, please subscribe and please give me a thumbs up because that helps other people find my content. All of these lenses, as well as everything that I own, is available on my website. And the links are right down there in the description. Just click on that link and you can find everything I own and see everything uh, that I've got, all the different gear, and, and look at it yourself and decide for yourself if it's right for you. And if you click a link and end up buying it, I get like a dollar or two and it helps to keep this channel afloat. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.